Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, I'll show you my extensive overcoat collection, I'll tell you why I have them, and I'll show you how I combine them with my gloves and with my scarves. <laughs> Minnesota, and when it gets really cold outside, people start complaining. For me, it's the other way around. I love wearing overcoats because it allows me to add an additional layer to my cold weather outfits. Now, what's the difference between an overcoat, a top coat, and be a great coat? Check out this video here where I explain the terminology. So how did I end up with almost 20 overcoats in my collection? Well, over the years, I bought vintage, and I really like vintage overcoats for four reasons. Number one, most of the overcoats you can buy these days just look boring. Usually, they come in plain black charcoal or navy. Sometimes they have zippers and weird details, and I just don't like the look of them. That being said, black is one of the most overrated colors. If you want to know why, check out this video. The second reason I don't like modern overcoats is the weight of the fabric. In my opinion, they're way too light, and while that's a popular trend among suits for an overcoat, you want the fabric to be as heavy as possible so it keeps you warm. Overcoats made 50 or 60 years ago were a lot heavier, and sometimes they weigh up to 10 pounds or five kilograms or more. Honestly, these heavy overcoats keep you warmer than any Montclair down jacket or Canada goose jacket. If you wanna learn more about those, check out our reviews here. I mean, if I would've been able to find modern heavyweight overcoats, I probably would buy them, but maybe that's something we can make for Fort Belvedere. Stay tuned. The third reason I like vintage overcoats is cost. Not a lot of people wear them anymore, but they used to back in the day, so supply and demand works in your favor. Oftentimes you can find fantastic overcoats priced between five and $200 versus a new coat from Brooksburgs. For example, this polo coat would set you back $1,700. Now, I'm sure it's a great coat if you wear it a lot, the cost per wear is good, but if you can find something comparable for five, 10, or 50 bucks, why not take that? Last but not least, the fourth reason I like vintage overcoats is the variety in patterns, in textures, and details. You just find classic paletots, half belts, full belts. You find raglan sleeves or regular sleeves or little ulster collars and details that you just don't find in most modern overcoats these days. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at my collection. I started with top coats, specifically my trench coats. Well, they're technically not overcoats. I include them in this video because in warmer areas of the world, you can wear trench coats during the winter. I own four trench coats, but I only wear three regularly, and these are the double-breasted ones. Why? I like the look of them, and that's also the classic style. And you can learn more about it in our trench coat guide, as well as in our Is It Worth It Burberry here. The first trench coat I bought had this typical khaki or sand color. It was from Jupiter Paris, was made in Korea, and had a composition of 65% polyester and 35% cotton for the shell as well as the lining. Overall, I think it was a good entry level coat. It was not too long, it had some details. It definitely had fewer details, such as the D rings of the Burberry trench coat. The Jupiter Paris one cost me 25 bucks, and I bought it on eBay. The second trench coat I got was from Burberry. It was a black one, and I bought it in 2007 from a store called Rudolf Buffet in Hamburg, which specializes in vintage British goods. I think at the time it cost about 200 euros, and I bought it from the proceeds of the sale of a Goyard suitcase set, and you can learn more about that story here. The shell is made of 67% polyester and 33% cotton, while the lining is 50 poly, 50 cotton. It's still made in England, it has the old label, and it has regular sleeves, not raglan sleeves. Now that's not typical for a trench coat, but I really like the look of it. Also the way the buttons slightly get narrower to the bottom is just very elegant in my opinion. It also has a very slim cut, which is unlike most traditional trench coats, which are cut a little more roomy. I like this trench coat for travel because it's dark and it doesn't pick up dirt very quickly. That being said, if I could buy it all over again, I'd probably get it in a charcoal color or maybe a dark navy because it's more versatile than black. The other Burberry trench coat is in a classic khaki color. The buttons were replaced and it was a second hand piece that I got from someone. I can't remember how much it cost. Now this one is the classic trench coat with all the bells and whistles and details such as epaulets, the belt with a D-ring, the 
hand warmer pockets, the kind of rain flaps. And if you want to learn more about the details, again, check out our trench coat guide. What makes this trench coat unique are two things. One, it has buttons that were replaced. They're kind of brass buttons with a crest and they're kind of vintage looking and I really like that. On top of that, it has a nice removable lining that is made out of wool, which comes in really handy if you live in an area where it may get a little cooler in the winter, but it's super cold. Last but not least, the fourth trench coat I never wear is a gray single-breasted one from Henro, made from Max Dietl in München. Henro is an Italian brand and they specialize in fur goods. So while the fit and look of this trench coat is not very appealing in my opinion, I only bought it for its fur lining because it is mink and if you buy it new, it costs you probably around $5,000. I got this one for 200 bucks on eBay and I'm going to take out the liner with a zipper and put it into another overcoat that I need to be really warm because mink, because of the fine under hair, is extremely warm. With the trench coat, you don't really need a scarf. I like to wear gloves with them, especially unlined gloves, because it's about the right weight and insulation that you need when you wear a trench coat. Now I like suede gloves in red or navy, but I also like to wear my driving gloves with it, maybe in green or petrol blue or red. Next up, let's talk about short overcoats. That's usually an option for people who don't live in a very cold climate or who just don't like the look of a long traditional overcoat. First, let's look at my pea coat. It's from the US Navy. It's an officer's coat and you can tell so by the golden brass buttons. It's hard wearing, it is made out of 100% wool and it's very inexpensive. I don't military surplus stores, or you can find it on eBay. I got mine from eBay for under $100. And the great thing about it is that it comes in many different sizes, regular lengths, short lengths, and you just have to know your measurements and see that you get something that fits you. Otherwise, they can be a bit roomy. Now, most pea coats out there will have those black anchor buttons. I liked the gold officer's buttons. And from 1974 to 84, they also had ones with pewter buttons, which I would like even more. They're just a little harder to find. I like to wear my pea coat with contrasting gloves and scarves. That means nothing too dark. For example, look at this yellow cashmere herringbone scarf that you can find in our shop from Fort Belvedere. It looks beautiful with it, but pretty much anything else would work too. Just about black, dark brown, or navy gloves or scarves. The other short overcoat that I have is from Austin Reed. I bought it at this gigantic flea market in Brimfield, Massachusetts for 10 bucks. I would think it's from the 60s or 70s. It has a bolder pattern and a nice heavy weight. So it's very easy and quick to put on. It has a little belt. And because the pattern is strong, I typically combine it with solid scarves and solid gloves. I try to tone down the colors more neutrals, browns or tans. I mean, you can maybe wear a red pair of gloves, but because the pattern of the coat is already so loud, I try to tone the accessories down. Sadly, this great 100% wool coat is no longer available because the brand Austin Reed doesn't really exist in its original shape anymore. Now, next up are business overcoats. These are overcoats I would wear with traditional charcoal or navy three-piece business suits. Typically, they're made out of finer materials such as cashmere or higher twisted wool. More often than not, they're medium to lightweight because you just wear them to and from the office and typically you don't want something that is well suited for an Antarctic exhibition. Why? Well, if you wear it on top of the suit, chances are you may sweat and that's not a desirable. The first one in this category is a midnight blue double-breasted 4-1 coat from Chester Berry. I like it because it's buttoned on the lower button and the 4-1 button configuration is unusual. It is 100% cashmere. It's a medium weight, I'd say, and I bought it for about 100 bucks from eBay. Because it's a dark, it could also be worn with a tuxedo, which is great if you don't have a separate evening overcoat. It looks gray for business with, let's say, a gray pair of gloves or something darker like petrol. For a more casual look, you could maybe wear brown gloves or chamois yellow gloves, orange gloves or red gloves. In terms of scarves, I think a subtle pattern or any kind of pattern with a solid overcoat always looks good. Now, if you wanna have it to be true business, maybe you get it in a dolphin gray. So you have enough contrast, but it's a traditional business color. 
If you want to be a little louder, you can maybe go with a yellow scarf or something orange, or maybe something green, or basically any other contrasting color. Next overcoat is a slightly lighter navy cashmere coat that is single-breasted. It's made by CDGFT in Italy, and it uses 100% Lodopiana cashmere. It is a little heavier than the double-breasted one, but otherwise you'll wear the same kind of accessories with it. Next up is this beautiful black and white herringbone overcoat that is double-breasted. It's a vintage piece, was made by Malcolm and Kenneth. It is made from 100% Stonehenge Chevio wool. If you want to learn more about that Chevio tweet, please check out our tweet guide here. It has nice details, such as oversized flap pockets, a nice big ulster collar without any buttonhole, and a half belt in the back. The collar pops up nicely, which I like in the winter because it protects my neck from the wind. And it also has a decent length, which allows me to stay warm. It was sold at Dayton's, which was a local department store many years ago, and I bought it for 50 bucks at a vintage store locally. My last business overcoat is a very special one from Chester Berry, which has this unusual fabric consisting of gray, blue, and black yarns. It has this barley corn pattern, and so from afar it looks like a solid color. When you come more up close, you can see the pattern, but because it contains all the traditional business colors, it's very easy to combine it with any kind of business suit. Now the cut is a typical double-breasted paletot coat, and you can learn more about the details in our paletot guide. What makes it special is the contrasting black velvet collar. That collar definitely makes you stand out from the crowd in a very debonair way. Now, I think it looks great with black gloves or gray gloves because it's a very business-like color. For scarves, I'd say go with something that has a light pattern, such as our wool silk scarves, which have classic paisleys. Of course, a pattern like a herringbone will work too. If you want to increase the formality of this overcoat, add a fedora hat to it, like a dark one, for example, with maybe a printed burgundy scarf and pedral gloves. It looks awesome. Just like with the other business overcoats, you can pair it with lighter and brighter accessories, but the brighter they get, the more casual your overall look becomes. Next up, let's look at my casual overcoats. I like to wear flannel suits in unusual colors and patterns, or tweed jackets or cardigans. And for those, a traditional business overcoat is not the right option. Instead, you go with something that's a little more casual in terms of the details and the fabrics. The first one I bought was a British Warm from Geefs and Hawks. It cost me about 200 bucks or 250 bucks, and I bought it from eBay in the UK. It's very heavy, it has leather buttons, it has a smaller peak lapel, and epaulets, which shows that there's a military heritage to that coat. The shoulders are a little wide for me, but it's really heavy, and so I love to wear it in the winter, especially with a brown fedora hat, and maybe some brown gloves, and a darker pattern scarf. You can see, you always want your accessories to be slightly contrasting to your overcoat. Now, this one can even be worn with a pocket square, or alternatively, you can just put your gloves in there when you don't wear them, let's say, when you're inside. The last casual overcoat I bought was the original Montgomery in a very bright green. It's made in England, it's a size L, and it's 90% wool, 10% polyamide, which is nylon. It was super inexpensive, it cost less than 100 bucks, was on sale directly on their website, yet I haven't worn this coat really more than a single time when I took videos of it. Why? Well, it's quite bold and it's not subtle. It was my first duffel coat and it's quite casual. It has these wooden toggles as well as a hood, so you don't need an extra head. That being said, it's such a loud color that if you wear it, you have to really tone down your accessories and go with something darker or brown, otherwise it becomes too clownish. Another recent addition is this great double-breasted navy overcoat, which is made out of a boiled wool. I bought it at Bobby from Boston for about 200 bucks, but it is a bespoke coat from a tailor in Sheffield. It's really heavy, it has this nice Ulster collar, and it keeps me really warm, especially when I put on the belt. It doesn't have the typical flat pockets of a business overcoat. Instead, these are more like hand warmer pockets. Just like the other navy overcoats, it's really fantastic with colorful accessories. And because it's more casual, the sky is really the limit. Whether it's orange, red, yellow, green, turquoise, you can wear everything with it. Next up is a coat I've had for a long time. It's a Donegal tweed overcoat 
that was made from Marshall Fields. I suspect it's from the 80s or maybe 90s. The tweed isn't super heavy, but it has these rich, colorful flecks, which allows you to wear which pretty much anything in terms of color. Because it's such a bold pattern with all the colors, you better stick with solid gloves and scarves. I bought it on eBay for under $100. It has a half belt as well as turn-ups or cuffs and a seam on the outside sleeve. Normally, you would expect a coat of this kind to have an ulster collar, just like the one I'm wearing here, but this one has a peak lapel, which makes it more formal, which is kind of funny because it's in contrast to the patch pockets with the flaps, which are more casual. The next overcoat is likewise a Donegal tweed overcoat, but I bought it in Germany in 2015 at a flea market for five euros when it was 90 degrees or 30 degrees Celsius outside. So no one else was interested in overcoats, so I picked it up. It was made in Germany and I really like it because it has those bold flecks, it's a bold pattern, but it's all very neutral. Shades of brown, black, off-white, and because of that, any accessories in, in that color palette will work and look really, really well without being over the top. It has beautiful patch pockets, a nice Ulster collar, and it is double-breasted, but it has a very slim button stance, which is different than other coats I have. It features a belt, which I like to use, and it has a little detail on the sleeves too. Again, because the pattern of the overcoat is so bold, I keep it mostly with accessories that are in a solid color. The next casual coat is the Cavalry Trill overcoat I'm wearing here right now. It comes from a big department store with clothing in Munich, Germany, which is called Lodenfrei. It's pretty lightweight for a wool overcoat, but it is made of a very tightly woven twill that has this diagonal pattern on the overcoat. It has hand warmer pockets, epaulets, a back belt, as well as leather buttons in brown. I like the pockets because they're very easy to reach in and out of. The belt on the back just makes it a little more unique, and the epaulets just highlight the military heritage. Like I've said many times before, overcoats are great when they're double-breasted because it means you have two layers of fabric over the center of your body, which will keep you warmer when it's colder outside. Because it's a solid overcoat in a neutral or natural tone, similar to that of a trench coat, you really look best in it if you pair it with a patterned scarves and contrasting gloves in a color. I mean, it can be gray, but you can also go with a dark burgundy, for example. Now, I have another Cavalry Trill overcoat that is a little heavier, and it's a bespoke piece from Heinz Becker in Munich. I also got it secondhand, and I like it a lot. It has a bunch of special details, which start with the buttons, which are metal. It has, of course, some epaulets and a half belt in the back. But what makes it special are the flap pockets that are angled and the big turn-offs on the side. It's heavily military-inspired, and on top of that, the most unique detail is probably the chest pocket, which has a flap. You can tell it's a bespoke piece because of that. I've never seen something like that off the rack. It's a marvelous coat, and I typically wear it with contrasting gloves and scarves. Next up is a fur coat in Nutria that is likewise double-breasted. I bought it many years ago at eBay, and I think it didn't cost me more than two or 300 bucks. Now, while fur coats are not very popular for men these days, they used to be extremely popular in the 1930s. Yes, even in the US, men would wear those when they would go and watch football games, for example. The fur of Nutria is not as good as that of beaver, but it's a large rodent that is similar to a beaver. Because of the fine under hair, it is really warm when you wear it, but that longer, hairy look is best if you pair it with a fedora hat. Honestly, a fur coat will keep you really, really warm, even if it's terribly cold outside. And if a fur on the outside is too much for you, maybe consider a fur lining, like a pluck beaver, for example, or a mink is heavenly. To learn more about fur coats for men, please check out this guide on our website. The other fur coat I own I bought for 50 bucks at a flea market in Hamburg, Germany. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's rabbit because it doesn't have that fine under hair that a nutria or a beaver or a mink has, for example. That being said, it's a very soft fur coat and it's still plenty warm. Unfortunately, it sheds a little bit since it's a little older, 
but I don't mind that. Since both of my fur coats are dark, I like to pair them with lighter or neutral accessories such as red gloves or green gloves and a matching pattern scarf that picks up the color of the gloves but is contrasting enough to the overcoat. Last but not least, probably my favorite overcoat is my evening overcoat. It's very rare these days that people even know what an evening overcoat is, let alone that they have one. And the only way to get them is to have them made bespoke. This one here was made by Hermann Voralik in Düsseldorf, Germany, and is probably 60 or 70 years old. I bought it on eBay years ago because I saw that the lapels were silk-faced because they were contrasting from the black wool fabric. The interior is lined with high quality black silk from edge to edge and it just turns over onto the lapel. It has a single closing button and a very deep V and the reason is that you really just wear it on top of your tuxedo. It's more a decorative piece that is supposed to keep you protected from the harshest elements but it's all about the looks and not necessarily about keeping you 100% warm. That being said, it's an old fabric. It's heavier, but with just one closing button, you can take it off very easily. And typically it's worn with a homburg if you wear a black tie tuxedo or a top hat if it's a white tie ensemble. It is also combined with an evening scarf, either in white silk or black and white silk. And you can wear it with a white linen pocket square and white evening gloves, all of which you can find in our shop here. Of course, we also offer a large range of many different gloves for gentlemen in different colors, leathers, as well as scarves out of high-end materials with interesting classic patterns. So if you're in the market for that, please have a look. In today's video, I'm wearing this Cowley Twill Overcoat, double-breasted with the leather buttons, which I already mentioned. I'm combining it with a navy blue scarf and red polka dots, as well as burgundy touchscreen gloves that work on any touchscreen without having to take anything off. It's really handy when it's cold outside and you don't want to take your gloves off. My pants are mid-brown corduroys from Ralph Lauren, and I'm combining them with gray fur-lined boots from Heinrich Dinkelacker. <laughs>